I run a business that manages holiday rental properties on the Mornington Peninsula in Victoria. Uh, over the last year, the short-term rental bookings have really slowed. Due to the increased cost of living and the interest rate hikes, consumers just don't have the money to spend on weekends away. My question is, why does the government think that it's appropriate to put an extra tax, i.e. the 7.5%, on top of the nightly rate of every stay in what will cr almost cripple a struggling accommodation industry and decimate the tourism in our Mornington Peninsula region and other regions? This has nothing to do with our cr um, housing crisis. Um, so, yeah, I'd be interested in your opinions. Yeah. Now, just to be clear, there's no representative of the Victorian government here, and it's a no, Victorian government, no. not just, mm -hmm. just for yeah. our, our viewers at home too. Yeah. Uh, I know Tom has mentioned it on his radio. So I'll start with you, yeah. Tom, because you say it has nothing to do with housing. The government in Victoria says it does have something to do with housing. It's about yep, building. I can speak using, to more of yeah. that yeah. as well. Well, it, it doesn't really. I mean, the fact is that the bulk of short-stay accommodation in Victoria is other Victorians. It's Victorians holidaying in their own state which you would have thought the state government would like to do. I mean, if you want to keep money within the state, then if you go to Wilson's Prom or Mornington Peninsula or wherever, that should be good. So to tax Victorians and, and dissuade them from holidaying in our own state is done. All right, th that's that. Secondly, the government has a problem with social housing. All right, Airbnb accommodation is not the solution to social housing. It's a classic what they call hypothecation of revenue. We have a housing problem over here, social housing. Oh, we have another bunch of housing here which we think is making money. Let's tax that to try and solve that. And I would just say, why? You don't, mm. you don't have to have a tax on one sort of housing yeah. to try and fix but another we, sort. I think there is a consensus, though, isn't there, Larissa, that there is an issue around Airbnb and the growth and the uh, consequence being a lack of longer-term rentals. Well, maybe, but that's a separate thing. Look, lack yeah. of longer-term rentals is not the same as social housing. They're different things. No, 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 but, OK, I'm just asking but Larissa no, on longer-term rentals. No, and I, I, I rentals. would say also this is a... It is trying to treat a symptom of the housing crisis. I think if you look at the, the problem of Airbnbs and you look... Uh, I grew up in the Northern Rivers, the amount of people that moved up there uh, during COVID, Absolutely, this is a low socioeconomic area. It is impossible for families to get reasonable housing within that. So, yes, there needs to be some looking at how we look at Airbnbs, but the reality is we're looking at state and territory and federal governments who, is, who have refused to fund a housing crisis for many, many years. This is decades of inaction, of not funding social housing, of not making affordable housing for young people, and we are, you know... Are my generation going to be able to own homes? Probably not. We need to build much more than is on offer right now. So, Peter, how does this help supply? Well, it is all about supply. And let's be really clear about this. We are in a housing crisis and it's about supply, supply, supply. And, Chris, and I respect your, your point about you have a business to run. This is a Vic Victorian state tax, an Airbnb tax. No one's going to force you not to put those out on, on short stay rentals. But there is a housing crisis and we need to address it. And the money that's going to come out of that that particular tax is going to be reinvested back into social and affordable housing. Let's have a look at the facts. 36,000 uh, 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 houses in Victoria, 29,000 of which are actual houses, not just apartments, are uh, used for short-stay short rental. There was a story about a, a lovely regional town called Bright in which the local butcher couldn't even... Re he'd spent six months living uh, in the back of his van because he couldn't... Uh, rent a place for him and his family. He was the new butcher in town because half of the uh, accommodation in the town was short-stay rental. Now, you know, I th I'm very passionate about housing. I grew up in public housing. It gave a roof over the head for my migrant family when we first came to Australia. It gave us an opportunity to settle, to get an education, to make our contribution. And this is not just about social and public housing, as important it is as a, as a house. It's, all, it's also about affordable homes. There are people who, in, in their 20s who are lining up for six hours to look at a rental property. Yeah, but the question and they, is... And they, it's 800 bucks a week and, and the taps don't work. Yeah, there yeah. is no The question is, how there. does this resolve that? Yeah. And because I don't think it does. It you don't think it does? I really don't think it does. The because... money is being reinvested into yeah. social and affordable housing from that particular tax. State and okay. federal governments... This but is I the think whole on a government. national Let's level, hear, Madeline, we yeah. labour under a misconception that all Airbnbs are... Rich people have multiple houses that are not... No-one is living in them and they're rent, rented out purely for an income. Whereas the majority of, like, Kirsten... Kirsten? Kirsten? Kirsten. Kirsten. <laughs> ...will be sort of mom part Airbnb operators. They might have a front room or a, a separate dwelling that they're renting out to pay off their own mortgage. So it's saying, well, then let's steal from Peter to pay Paul. Okay. As opposed to addressing All the right. greater issue. Full declaration, we've been doing this on this show. <laughs> Who's renting out on Airbnb? Put your hand up. None of you. 
Oh. None of you are Christian. in the Airbnb no. world. You are. The holiday <laughs> rental market is not the cause or the solution of the Correct. housing yes. crisis. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But it's... okay. So there's a 7.5 per cent tax. It yeah. starts in 2025, is yeah. my understanding. Will you just pass that on to consumers? Well. Airbnb will, yeah. yeah. So Airbnb and stays and every rental and, platform and, will and pass it on. you so think it will lead to f fewer people staying in the absolutely, property? Absolutely, absolutely. So the reason that most of the property managers, uh, property owners that I manage their property, they are holiday houses, they're never going to be permanent rentals. So it's never going to be, oh, we've, you know, passed on too many taxes, we're now going to permanently rent our house. That's never going to happen. They're potentially going to be forced to sell their house and, you know, that's that's at the punishment of them for, you know, being, you know, well off and, um, you know, having another property that they can call as a holiday home. So they're just trying to get an extra bit of income out of that holiday home to offset the land tax, the, you know, all of the new, you know, the electricity fees and, you know, all of the increases that have been put to them. PK, it's... I think this is a great decision for Queensland. Because oh, you'll get more Absolutely. people to Absolutely. Queensland. Absolutely. Yeah, really? exactly right. The Victorian it, it Premier the, it imposing the a tax to you. on businesses like yeah. Christine it's a great decision for Queensland. Yep. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, good for you. Absolutely. Dan Andrews says it's a modest charge, you know, this 7.5%, very modest. But that's not taking into account some of the properties that we manage, which are beautiful homes, and they're $1,000 a night. So, you know, $2,000 for a weekend, that's $150 at the 7.5 rate. Or yeah. Or 500 odd on a, um, you know, on I a I can week. understand, that's but can you understand modest. people might be watching this saying that's ridiculous? Oh, amount of money I to can't spend. spend a thousand bucks a night to go to a fancy house when they can't get a house to live in. I get that. I do get that. That's, yeah. but they're not mutually exclusive. You know, it's as I said, it's not. The holiday rental market mm. isn't causing the housing crisis. We've got eight million um, tourists that come each year to the Mornington Peninsula alone. They're not day trippers. They need somewhere to live. You know, to stay. <laughs> yeah. So, and those houses aren't taking the permanent rentals off someone, they're just putting livelihood into the region and, um, and getting the tourism dollar happening, which we need desperately. Oh, so I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, Patricia, yeah. I've got to say this. Um, housing is, is a fundamental human right. Mm -hmm. And right now there are people that cannot get a home. They cannot even get into the market, the rental market. All right? We have a housing crisis. Now, this is not the only policy. There, there is a suite of initiatives. There's investment. There's, we've passed the $10 billion Housing Australia Future Fund. We've, we've built up on renters' rights. We've <coughs> spent $3 billion on the National Homes Accord from 1.2 million homes to be built. There's a, a suite of things that have to be done by state and federal governments. But for too long, the, the idea of housing has skewed more to it being more of an investment vehicle. I understand that people are structured around that, but housing is a fundamental human right, and we need to get this right as a society. Yeah, but, but we sorry, need to but, actually do what... But, but Penny, you, you, you seem to be thinking that you're, you're acting like these landlords who have this evil thing about, oh, I'm going to rent out a house that. so people can go and have a little holiday or something. If, if it's a fundamental human right, why don't you, as part of a federal government, do something about we are. it? We've no, actually no, spent taxing, billions of taxing dollars. Taxing people who have a holiday months. house for rental is not doing something. It's well, handballing the problem to someone else. Okay, okay but do we need to reimagine how housing looks to make it more sustainable, to make it more accessible? Does it taking swathes of land that aren't currently considered desirable and creating communities that are interactive and sustainable, that maybe are growing their own food well, and made of be. hemp or something that's environmentally yeah. sustainable. It means reimagining the paradigm, because we're not doing that at the moment. We're just going, let's just blow up the taxes and then there's more dollars to go over there. Yeah. I mean, we saw it play out in Byron in the middle of the floods. Yeah. There were 2,000 some houses on Airbnb and only 200 were made available mm. for people who'd lost everything. So I understand how we can labour under the mis misconception, but I don't think Ma and Pa operators need to be made responsible but that, in order to but fix that's the not housing the point. crisis. Absolutely. Do we really think, though? Do we, do we really think? Do we really think, as a society, that it's acceptable that almost half of the accommodation in regional Victoria, for example, is short-stay accommodation? But I also think, think there's still but what talking about, about in Simpton, right? This is this is a housing crisis. What is on the table from every government in this country is not enough to deal with it. Mm. And I think that there is always going to be pitting different people against each other. But until governments get their act together and actually invest in the type of infrastructure and that we need regionally in this country, we're not going to solve the it's, housing it's, crisis. But it's not just about government. <laughs> it's not just about government. You need people who are prepared to buy properties to rent them. And if you make it too difficult for people to make that decision to buy a property and then to rent it out, 
and there's a lot of landlords who but, are leaving the market. But in this case, I don't that think that people having Airbnb difficult. properties are thinking of the struggling Long-term. people who are yeah. trying to rent them, are they? Absolutely, but you've but got to look not, at the perspective. You've true. got to look at the perspective of the landlords as well. If you make it too difficult for the landlords, you won't have landlords, and that's not going to be good for the rental market either. And they're not devoid of taxes. Those the landlords. Absolutely. Right. You know, they've got but it's land like if young people could buy houses, taxes. they could also pay taxes. I mean, taxes this is, yeah, taxes you're right, Larissa, it's intergenerational yeah. inequality here. Let's really be serious. Anyone that's under 50 here, or 40, or 30, in their 20s or 30s, would know exactly what I'm talking about. The difficulty of actually getting an affordable home, it's next to yeah. impossible. So, Tom, do you yeah. think Airbnb is an issue? That needs to be dealt with in another well, way. Well, look, if, if you want a tourism industry in Victoria, as I said, in Victoria, the bulk of people who stay in Airbnbs are other Victorians. So you so think Airbnb needs no reform? No, it's not that it might need no reform. It might. But the point is this. The people who have struggled to earn or you know, to buy a property to invest in, whether they rent it out short-term or long-term, or, to be honest, if they want to leave it empty and not earn any income, I can't imagine why someone would do that, mm. but maybe someone will. Governments need to sort out the housing mess themselves. The solution can't mm. always be... Okay. another tax, and that's my point. You know, now, you, you've got your $10 billion housing fund up with the Greens. I know you fought hard for that, and I think it's a good policy. Focus on that and less upon taxing mm-hmm. people.